Greetings. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining Inspire Church this beautiful day. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Who going to stop us from praising the Lord on this beautiful day? Not ourselves and not one enemy. Amen. We're going to serve him on today. Anyway, go ahead. Take time to invite a friend or a family member or anyone that you know that need an encouraging word on today. Patrick, Pastor Pat and I are continuing in the Proverbs Words of Wisdom sermon series. And we are... The, the, the marriage. That's not, okay, good. Uh, yeah, no, no, that's good. Right. And so we're, we're, we're continuing uh, in dealing with the marriages. And so if you know someone that is in a thriving or struggling uh, marriage, go ahead and take time to invite them, a spouse or someone that you know, or fiance, fiance yeah, engage. Boyfriends, girlfriends. Mm -hmm. like, so I, I want, because some of the information that we'll give, hopefully being boyfriend and girlfriend, help going forward in, in marriage. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So, mm -hmm. sorry, I didn't mean to take over. No, no, it's all I good. Did, did. No, 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 it's all good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so go ahead and invite. Listen, this is a part of the human relationship. Right. So really, if you know anyone, invite them to Inspire right. Church Memphis. Now, go ahead and send a text. I'm talking so that you can go ahead and do it. And, and mm -hmm. also, if, if you have small children, um, it's not going to be ex explicit. it's not going to be explicit, but we may touch on some things that may be yeah mm -hmm. uh, uh, ad adult appropriate. So we're going to do our best to take out certain words um, that would be we're going to do our best to take out certain words. So, but for just the be sake warned, of conversation, yeah, uh, yeah. Spoiler alert: mm -hmm. We're going to touch on some things that. Yeah. Not for children, so to speak. Yeah, you know and 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 also with Pastor Pat saying that it would be uh, to your best interest to really have your Bible with you. Yeah, and also to continue in that study, um, or you know, to to continue to read and study the Word so that you would know the Word that we maybe um, adjusted for the sake of Correct. the audience. Right. All right. Amen. So go ahead and grab your notepad, your pen, your Bible, your water, uh, whatever you need to minimize distractions and cut out distractions and shut out intrude, intrusion uh, so that you can focus and center your attention on the word of God on today because wisdom is always going forth, mm -hmm. but our minds have been so inundated with distractions and noise that it takes a lot of effort for us now to focus in and hone in, okay? So go ahead and do whatever you need to do uh, to minimize distractions and so we can center our focus on God's word, on his presence in our lives and our responsibility to him and as well as to each other. Right. Have anything else? No, no, listen, and uh, um, next week will be in-person service. So I want to strongly encourage you all to participate by being present uh, next week 5 p.m. at our in-person service and then when we have the virtual service the virtual service done at uh, intentional we want you to invite your family and friends over to your homes uh, so you can all watch it together and then have discussions about um, about the sermon so yeah just keep that in mind we're, we're trying to build a community of house churches and believers all over the world Amen. Amen. And so, you know, Pastor Pat, what you're saying that that is uh, relevant to a thought that I wanted to share too. Mm -hmm. You know, what Pastor Pat's vision is pertaining to Inspire Church is similar to that of having like you a workout group or community or maybe a brainstorming group or what, they, what, the, what uh, business people call it are masterminding. These are people that get together to sharpen each other and to encourage each other. Well, when it comes to the word of God or when mm -hmm. it comes to you growing in your faith, you have to have your core group that you can grow with. Right. And so this is what I would call spiritual self-care. 
And so it is our responsibility to get with solid believers Correct. where we can sharpen each other, not just in a public setting. Right. We don't want to dismiss that because this is definitely a freedom we get to share and enjoy. But by the same token, we don't want to just think that if we don't do it, then it's not supposed to be done. Right. Some of us don't get to make it to the gym or some of right. us don't get to make it to the park. Yeah. You still can walk in place to get the job done. Right. So uh, big churches call it small groups. So we have permanent small groups and uh, those small groups are other believers who get together. So when we're, when we're saying invite people to your home, we want you to invite other believers uh, to your home, try, try not to let it be more than, you know, eight to ten people uh, at a time. And then from there we can begin to discuss what's the next step after that. But it's a, um, it's a vision that God gave me and um, I'm excited about it. And, it's and not we're going we're gonna to make it work. We're yeah. going to make it work. It's not a far-fetched vision. Right. Why? Our Savior did it. Amen. Amen. He moved the world with 12. Amen. He moved the world. Let that sink in. With 12. Mm-hmm. But they were focused and intentional. Right. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Go ahead. Okay. I'm ready, I'm ready for prayer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Heavenly Father, we thank you for uh, this day. We thank you that uh, we have the opportunity to share and engage in your word. I pray, I, 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 I first want to say thank you for giving us your word, giving us instructions and guidance on how to live the gift of life mm -hmm. and to be fruitful, to have good results, not just random results, but I'm talking about good intentional results uh, as a result of us saying yes to you. I pray that as Pastor Pat and I go forth in discussing uh, your word and, and about relationship and your Proverbs, that uh, the spirit of wisdom will rest upon us, the spirit of excellence will come forth, uh, that we will be able to, to articulate and communicate what, you, what, what your mind is. Thank you for pouring it out by your Holy Spirit and that it would just ooze out to your body. Thank you for growing and restoring your bride to her full, her full beauty in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, that nothing will be lacking, nothing will be missing, nothing will be broken as a result of us humbling ourselves under your mighty hand. In the name of Jesus, we thank you and we praise you. Amen. Amen. Uh, so again, we're, we're in the part of the sermon. So Proverbs, again, we're taking our time um, because we really want you to learn what Proverbs has. Uh, there's some everyday, I call it everyday life decisions that, that the wisdom of Proverbs gives to us. Uh, my hope is that by going through Proverbs, we remove a lot of the cares of the world, which will, which will allow us to all the more hear what thus saith the Lord. And so in this part, we're dealing with uh, marriage and we're going to take our time and we're going to go through most of what what Proverbs says about marriage or that deals with marriage. And then after we finish that, we'll be in a different section of the Proverbs sermon series dealing with money or finances. And we'll go over uh, everything that Proverbs has to say uh, about finances. Amen? Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. All right. So we're in Proverbs chapter 5. We're going to go through verses 1 through 22. Don't hopefully, panic off of that. Hopefully yes. we'll get to all of them. If not, we'll come back next week and we'll, we'll finish up. Uh, and that'll be in person that time. Huh? It really Questions. would. That'll be, that'll be good. So I'm hoping that we, we, we go. <laughs> we go. <laughs> I know that's so weird. <laughs> oh, we don't finish. So we can, we we can be in person. Yes. That's good. <laughs> Amen. Uh, oh, so yeah. So listen, here, here's, here's, here's another thing. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, if you can't make it, Send somebody in your place. Yeah. If you can't make it, or you're still, and we're like we're still in this uh, awkward space, COVID yeah. situ situation thing. If you can't make it, send somebody to represent you uh, to be a part of the in-person service. Amen? And there is like you know we were growing up in church. We were always here. There's plenty of room at the cross. It is plenty of room at Inspire <laughs> Church for real. We have like a lot of square footage, and right. so listen. You won't have to bump and scrump into each other if you don't want to. Like, that's for real. Like, I'm, I'm not just saying that. Bump and scrump. Uh, yeah, you, it's plenty of space, and there's room for you Amen. at Inspire Church. Amen. Amen. All right. Proverbs chapter 5, verse 1 through 22, starting at verse 1. 
You got anything you want to say or can I go ahead? I do. I do have something I want to say. All right. This beautiful book here is called the Bible. And, 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 and as I was beginning the study uh, into the chapter, mm -hmm. I thought about uh, the acronym that is for the Bible. Mm -hmm. It's the basic instructions before leaving earth. Mm -hmm. When you realize that this is a manual on how to live, I believe you would approach it differently. That's good. It is, uh, Pastor Pat mentioned it last week, we go to, we have a, a, a t uh, if you have a 2013 Honda Civic, the manual came with the machine. That's good. And so it would be to your benefit to open up that manual to find out how to fully function it. To, and listen, and to, to operate, let's go back to Miles Monroe. If you have a, oh, this is so old. This is how old they don't even have VCRs anymore. If you have a VCR, Look it up. If you have a VCR, it came with a manual mm -hmm. that has that, that has a lot of instructions. Check this out on how to fully uh, utilize mm -hmm. everything that it can do. Every function. that it can offer. Mm -hmm. And so this Bible is that thing. It is so much in here to help us to get the fullness. This this life and life and more abundantly. Yes. This word and what he did, and because of what he did, mm -hmm. allowed us to have this word, word so that we can fully engage in the life more abundantly, whatever that is for our life. Yeah, Amen. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. And so the same thing applies, like I think about the, 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 forefathers, ancestors that have <laughs> come before us, they have paved and made a way for us to be able to do these Correct. things. And so our savior is no different. He was a real historical person that really went through what he was called to go through by yeah. his father to make a way. Yeah. So let's be good stewards of it, right. amen? We wanna make sure that we utilize it, we learn it. Listen, the basic instruction before leaving earth. Amen. All right, so verse one. Verse one says, now, in the context is a father, a father, a father giving instructions to his son. Mm -hmm. And so when we look at it, yeah, it's kind of like, it's always about, you know, the immoral person being an immoral woman, but you have to take the context. It's a father giving instructions to his son. If it was a, a mother giving instructions to her daughter, then I'm, I'm pretty sure it would say immoral man. All right, so just, but the, a lot of things that we're gonna go over, yeah, we're gonna say woman, but I want you to understand it's for both man and woman. So if you're a woman, think about this man. If you're a man, you know, think about this woman. But the first thing I got- Temptation can show up in a suit just like it can show up in a skirt. That's what's up, give me some. All right, <laughs> temptation can show up in a suit, that's dope. <laughs> So he says, my son, pay attention. Yeah. Pay attention. So I wrote down, if you don't pay attention, you will pay the consequences. Mm. If you don't pay attention, you will pay the consequences. You are free to choose your choices, but you're not free to choose the, uh, uh, the consequences for the choices that you choose. Mm -hmm. You are free to choose your choices, but you are not free to choose the consequences for your choices. So typically when people have, and if you, be, if you be honest, when we're doing good things, I'm listening to Andy Stanley, when, you do, when we're doing good things, like we don't really have tension that happens in our heart. Like we're not like, should I do it? Like, I, I, no, it's a good thing and we just do good. But when you know you're about to do something that, that's, so do something that may be questionable and you're not sure about it, there's a, there's a, there's a tension that's there. Poor yeah. Mm -hmm. And he says, pay attention to the tension. Yeah. Like, like when you're about to do something, you like, I just, uh, I, 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 that little part, like pay attention to that. Probably that's not, that's not thus said the Lord that's asking you to do that. That's so true. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, yeah, no. Go ahead. Uh, I was thinking about, um, also, and they say, my son, pay attention to my wisdom. Listen carefully to my wise counsel. I am reading out of the New Living Translation. Mm -hmm. And so, um, again, a father is talking to a son. 
and he's asking and grabbing for his attention. Yeah. So make sure that when wisdom is going forth, again, it could come from a father, it could come from a mother, it could come from a son, it could come from a daughter. In this context, it's coming from a father. And he's grabbing his son's attention saying, son, as my husband say, I'm about to serve it up on a platter. That right. means pay attention. Don't miss this meal. Check this out. So one, one of the, uh, one of the uh, 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 other versions said, it said, because she said she uh, read wisdom. My son, pay attention to my wisdom. This wisdom, it says godly wisdom. Check this out. Godly wisdom learned by costly experience. I see. Mm -hmm. Wisdom learned by costly experience. Y'all remember when I did the, did I do this earlier? Okay, I did a sermon series and I was talking about how, oh yeah, it was the very was first theory one. theory and practical. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was about um, those who are smart. No, it says fools never learn from their own mistakes. Smart people learn from their own mistakes. But wise people learn from the mistakes of others or the costly experiences of others. So if you're looking to be wise, not only will God give you wisdom, but he'll give you the wisdom to pay attention to other people's mistakes. Therefore, you don't have to make the same, same mistakes that other people made before you. Like, so don't look at uh, just successful marriages. Look at bad marriages. Look at marriages that fail and, and ask the question, like, what, okay, based on your marriage and you didn't, like, what, what did you do wrong? What could you learn from that? And then learn from what they did wrong in the marriage and don't apply that, <laughs> but what was good, you begin to begin to apply that. So they go back to what I just shared, or what was just shared earlier about the Bible being basic instructions, mm -hmm. right? And so instructions can go forth. When instructions go forth, there are pros and cons. Okay. There are do's and don'ts. Okay. And so I do want you to write this down if you can real quick. And the, uh, the word of wisdom is, there is a right way and a wrong way to do everything on earth. Hmm. There is, the word of wisdom is, there is a right way and a wrong way to do everything on earth. The word of wisdom is this, so choose to do the right thing because it's the right thing to do. Yeah. You're going to always be presented with a choice. That's good. And so listen, here it is, the word of God is here. And it's not just giving us just the moral woman or the woman of wisdom. Listen, the Lord is putting us on. He letting us know that <laughs> listen, us on, man. it's going it's going to be temptation is going to show up. Right. The opportunity to go rogue is going to be there. However, if you have listened to the instructions of the Father, let's make let's, let's take God. He is our Father. Mm -hmm. He has given us His Word, and He's saying, "Pay attention, yeah. incline your ear to what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Ask my Spirit to make it known. What is the heart and mind of the Lord? Yeah. Why? So we can do what's right. And when we do what's right, guess what? You can you can almost guarantee that you will have right results." Because we are on a fallen earth plane, everything is not going to go perfect. And this is not why we follow the instructions, it's to get a perfect life. Yeah. Well, why we do follow instruction is because we love our Father and we know He knows what's right for us. Correct. One of, one of the commentators said that, and, and this is true, it's not the temptation. Like the temptation is not the sin. Succumbing to or doing what the temptation is, is requesting or suggesting is the sin. Like when you do it, the temptation come, but, but the commentator said, you have to decide before the temptation even comes, you have to decide to do right. Because when the, when, when the temptation comes, your chances for saying no to the temptation is greater. Which we would call it success. success. Right. Uh -huh. Yeah, so uh, there were some things that, th this is the truth, there were some things that my wife and I decided um, before we started the church, there were some do's and don'ts concerning, you know, uh, counseling. How will we counsel? I'll give you one. I will not counsel uh, uh, a, a woman by herself. I just won't do it. it. My wife would have to be in the room with me. If for any reason I do find myself in the office with just me and her, the door is wide open so that anybody can see. That, those, are just, those are just things to help you 
make the best choices in, in life. And, and this, for me, this protects our, protects our marriage. You and know the saying? church. Yeah. And the church. Another and thing we do, I will not, this is, and then we're talking about protecting the marriage. I will not answer your text messages. I will not answer your cell phone calls on Monday. Those are reserved for my bride so that I can have the best time with her and that we can continue to flourish in our marriage. So when people call me and text, I don't care if you're right next to me. You could be sitting in the chair like this. I will not answer your text, your text messages or your phone call. Those are things that we decided to do before the thing happens so that we can make, so we can have the best opportunity or the best success for our marriage. That's just, I threw that out, threw a nugget out there for y'all. Y'all can take that with y'all too. Amen. So make the, another word of wisdom, write that note down, is make the decision before the decision. Yeah. Go ahead and, and it's a, it is, there are enough situations or there are enough um, scenarios that have gone forth and that you have seen and you can say, hmm, if, you know, if I was in that situation, I would mm -hmm. want to do this. Mm -hmm. Now, that doesn't mean that you're going absolutely, but again, you making a decision beforehand give you a greater a increase of doing it the right way. Yeah. So, so here's, here, to go with what we're saying, like all that we just said, actually I, I leads to, oh, go ahead. And, 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 and I also want to share too, that in doing right, you don't want to become self-righteous. Yeah, Your good. right is in his righteousness. Like you are staking everything that you think, say, and do on the finished work of Jesus Christ. Like you are nothing. You, you listen, everything that's in this Bible that he said don't do, that means we are capable of doing that's it. That's good. Everything. Everybody is. If given the situation, the circumstance, right. you would go astray too. You are no bit better or bigger or more stronger than Judas mm -hmm. or Peter. Like, mm -hmm. come on now. No. Mm -hmm. um, and so with that being said, you want to, again, make sure that you don't become puffed up in your uh, victories and achievements of choosing right mm -hmm. easier. Because as soon as you think that you cannot fall, take heed, yeah. you about to fall. Yeah, that's good. So, so, so it says, like I would just say, here we go. Listen carefully to wise counsel. I mean, incline your ear, incline your ear to the wisdom so that you can stretch forth with understanding. Love it. Incline your ear, like bend down. Remember we were talking about, a, a, last time I was talking about an older woman, she's speaking softly. And when she speaks softly, you have to bend down. You have to incline your ear. You have to bow down to, to her voice to hear what she's saying so that you can stretch forth in understanding in the how and the why of life. So I, so I, I incline to the, to the when and the where, that's what, that's what wisdom does. Mm -hmm. Wisdom answers the question when and where. I incline to the when and where so that I can stretch, for, stretch forth in the why and how. So it says, listen carefully to my wise counsel. Now remember that, remember I was doing the last time? We hadn't even got to the part where he's given the uh, 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 advice about, uh, about marriage, yeah. about the woman. I just like, I need you to get this part first. Like this is the prerequisite. Yeah, this is the groundwork. This, this, uh, this is the foundation. So, so check this out. This is the foundation he's saying for, as my wife say, the spirit of a dutch. Is that right what you're saying? Mm -hmm. Like this is the foundation. People go astray, not just in marriage. So, say what you told me, because you told me that earlier. <laughs> okay, now you, I, I can't remember. Okay, so... So it's so the spirit of adultery is most prevalently right. seen in the relationship when it comes to marriage. Mm -hmm. But the spirit of adultery is perversive through the generation. Gotcha. So you and so we know that adult to be a, adulterous or to be an adulterer is one that is faithless. Gotcha. That means that it's one that is uncommitted, like they have not held true to the tenets of the covenant that they agreed to. Mm -hmm. And so <clears throat> what, how does faithful faithlessness show up? People uh, don't, they're not faithful to keep, they don't their, keep word. their word. Yeah. yeah. It, they don't keep their word. They, they are not uh, responsible. Again, these are some of the attributes of being faithless. That's good. So I'm about to, about to confess, I mean, with conviction. They're not, they're not good at keeping, at managing time. It, it shows up. Because I said I'm going to be here, so it's like, you know, anyway. So, yeah, so anyway, 
It says, listen so carefully to what I said. Sorry. Okay. So, and, and <laughs> even with that, Pastor Pat, again, what I just, we just mentioned earlier, don't you think that you didn't made it because, yeah. I, you know, I'm not cheating on my boo or whatever the case. I know. I don't I don't know why but why yeah, that? <laughs> just because it may not be showing up in your relationship, I am here to tell you that nine times ooh, ooh, out of ooh. ten, go ahead. It is showing up somewhere else in your life. But, but even, yeah, that's good. But it starts in the heart. Yeah. So the mm. faithlessness in the marriage didn't start with the side boo. Mercy. The faithlessness, is that right? Mm -hmm. In the marriage started with your heart. I will always remember that. That's a word of wisdom. It's because your start heart. Start in the heart. Start in the heart. Your heart is not faithful, especially for those who are believers. Your heart is not faithful to the word of God. To the person to of the, him. To uh -huh, God. Uh -huh, okay, it's good. Yeah. Your heart is not faithful to God. How can your heart be faithful to your bride or to your husband? Mm -hmm. and, and listen, and, and, and now listen now. Whew, I'm so glad we're going to be in part two next week. But listen, when it comes to, again, the person of God, mm -hmm. right? Uh, when we choose to be choose to receive his faithfulness to us, it then touches our heart to be faithful to him. Yeah. And then guess what it does? It makes us appreciate what he has to say. Yeah. What makes me turn my head to look at you? Because the person of you, I respect. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so again, if my heart is not uh, tender and responsive to the Lord, then how well, am I going to be tender and responsive to my next most important relationship? Yeah. It's not going to happen. Yeah. But when it is good and understanding and it, it has inclined to what? The word of the Lord, the person. I show him, give him worship and respect mm -hmm. in just who he is. I may not know one scripture, mm -hmm. but I do know he is. Mm -hmm. And so I worship him right there. And then right. he'll teach me how to Get in that word. Yeah, that's good. I got, I got all excited. Nah, because <laughs> even in that, I was just thinking about, you know, because a lot of people can fake the funk. I ain't heard that phrase in a long time. A lot of people can fake it, but eventually, eventually the wolf snarls. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead. You're not going to. Okay. Okay. <laughs> oh, sidebar, but this is so good, Patrick. Pastor Pat. I got to remember your pastor, Pastor Pat. All right. So when it comes, so this, so I was in the devo in my devotion time, my private time, mm -hmm. and so I wrote the word flow. I was asking the Lord to give me a flow in the Holy Spirit, right? Mm -hmm. Like it's, it, it's His pneuma, His breath. Mm -hmm. We we go, we go, we 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 live and move by the flow of the Spirit, mm -hmm. right? F L O, yeah, we say F L O W. <laughs> I get tripped up on my words. Central High School. F L O W. <laughs> third in my class on the back. Amen. <laughs> it's okay. <Shut> <laughs> I'm free. <laughs> anyway, F L O W. All right. Made 18 on the ACT. But I'm here. Amen. Highly intelligent. Oh, Was God. not going to be put in a box. Okay. F L O W. <laughs> then, listen, when you spell it backwards, it's wolf. And that's what we do. We live a very. Uh, Wolfish. Uh, yeah. It, 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 when we don't flow with the Holy it, Spirit. We are intimidated See by the evil out. one. You got something to Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're intimidated by the growls, the cares, the, you know. It, it's like we're not in a flow anymore. Yeah. We're not yeah. trusting him moving us. Yeah. Instead, what are we being driven by? The the growls and the uh, of the wolf. Yeah. And, and and listen, it come, they, they come in sheep clothing. That's Look what, like it, but... You know, what mighty big tent you have, kind of yeah. like uh, Little Red Riding Hood, you know? I think that's the story. Yeah, yeah. Little Red Riding Hood. And so we want to not be moved by the wolf, the wolf spirit of this world. Uh -huh. We want to be flowing in the whole spirit. And here's the thing. When we're wolfing, not trying to girl house in good ways. When we're wolfing or flowing backwards, that means, because a lot of people start out right. Mercy. And you can tell where the misstep is. The, the misstep in, 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 this, in this walk as believers is because we begin to live in a different, a different way. We're not following the Spirit. We're, we're now fulfilling the lust of our flesh. That means that's your cue. That's, that's our cue 
that we're not, we're not being led by the Spirit of God. Mercy. Remember I say, I'll say it all the time, if you're not being led by the Spirit of God, you're being misled. I don't care what it is. You know what I'm saying? Oh, where it is. Yeah. Or who good. it is. That's good. So, okay. verse 2. Verse 2. Now, you don't have to don't, uh, no, be you. Easy. Yes, sir. <laughs> then you will show discernment, and your lips will express what you've learned. Mm -hmm. Amplify says it this way. Then you may ex exercise discrimination and discretion, which is good judgment, and your lips may reserve knowledge, and here's the good part, and answer wisely to temptation. That's the part I want you to get. When you grab this and you pay attention and you get the wisdom and you listen, and you listen carefully to, <laughs> we missed that part, listen to the wise counsel. Listen to the people who've gone before you, who, who are successful at it, who messed up it. Listen to the wise counseling. Not counseling. Now, not listen like, okay, I heard it, but listen with the purpose of understanding so that you can apply it to your life. That's wisdom. Right. Mm -hmm. it's That's wisdom. The it's application of knowledge. Application of knowledge. Amen. I love it. And listen. If I am paying attention and inclining my ear. I don't know why I'm yelling. Go ahead. It's okay. Because you get excited. Yeah. Inclining my ear mm -hmm. to stretch forth. Now, because the stretching is an action. Yeah. That means that I'm listening with the intent to do what is being asked. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's nothing more frustrating than someone that you give them instruction. Look, I take the time to part my lips and let my voice come through the organ. Of, I found out that my mouth is an organ, the organ of my mouth, and you dismiss what I say? After you've asked for it, even after you've asked for counseling. My mercy. I had a friend one time ask me for some advice. Focus. Today. <laughs> We're going to keep going. He agreed that my advice was the right advice. See that? Keep it going. And he did the opposite of what, I, what he agreed which was good advice. He told me it was right, it was true, it was the best thing for him to do, but I'm not gonna do that. Huh? That's when you say, okay, you're the other person that in Proverbs tell us not to, not to talk to them. See? Uh, anyway, answer wisely to temptation. That's the part I wanna get to. Go ahead. And listen, this is for the fathers or those that of us that are mature. Before we part our lips, Ask the Lord, is this where you want me to invest? Mm. Why? I don't have that much time. Mm. So I have this thing where I, I am numbering my days now. Yeah. I know that I have, well, let me see, 12,863 days. Six, no, to six, reach what 60 age, though? days to reach 80. Okay. I don't have time to waste time. So, Lord, if I'm supposed to engage in this conversation, give me what to say. If I am to remain, remain quiet and silent, give me to do that. I was watching a comedian. So, I'm 49. I'll be 50 next year. That means I have, amen. I didn't think I was going to reach that. That means if, if I get to be 70, which is what God promised. Let's just start, let's start with 70. If I reach 70, that means I only have 20 summers left. Mercy. I got 20 summers left. Now, if I, if I make 80 by reason of strength, I mean, I got 30 summers left. We don't, we don't have a lot of time to play. Remember, when I told y'all, it was last year, I ain't got time to play with y'all. I'm gonna give you this information. I hope to God, your heart is good in understanding our ground. Hearts, yeah. I hope to God, our hearts are good in understanding yes. ground. Yes. So that we give increase to our Father. Listen, so when glory, I- glory, increase in our lives, and glory to our Father. So when our summers come, mm. we'll have fruit in our baskets. That's good. You don't want to, we have, we are so sidebar, but it is on point. When you come to that, um, let me see, you see you guys, when you get to that halfway mark of that 20th summer, mm -hmm. you don't want to empty this uh, fruit basket. <laughs> you don't have anything to show for life. Right. You hadn't done what the Lord told you. Like, what you waiting on? Yeah. My summers are limited. Yeah. So I'm getting that work done. Yeah. Get out the way or get ran over. <laughs> <laughs> As saints of God, we're running people over. So listen, so here we go. For the Lord. Running answer, for the Lord. Answer, answer 
<laughs> wisely to temptation. That means when temp when 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 temptation come, I have a wise answer to deal with you. Mm. I'm not just I'm, I'm just I'm not just speaking. I'm I'm speaking wisely to what you about. You say what? Whoa, 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 whoa. No, nope. let me tell you something. I know what you're doing. Let me tell you something. I see what you said. I got you. Let me give you this word. And I and then with the temptation, if it's necessary and you you can't say anything, the temptation always comes with a way of escape. Everyone. Are you taking it? That's the question. But you see it. You see the exit sign. Here come temptation. There's an exit sign. Always. So this wisdom. And so she was like, we're taking so much time, but we're trying to distance the foundation before we even get to the part where we begin to talk about the immoral woman or the immoral man. You got to grab the foundation. Nobody builds a house without first making sure that the Prince. foundation is firm. That it is laid straight and laid right so that you can build upon it. And it's solid. Yeah. And it's a sure foundation. And remember, I told y'all, I don't want to rush this sermon mm -hmm. series. This is probably the longest sermon series we have at Inspired Church. But I just, I don't want to rush this, guys. I don't know why I'm like, it's like, okay. It's I, okay. I, I really want you to get it. Yeah. Like, I want, I, like, I, like, I look at the world and I drive, driving home and I, I see the despair and it's like certain things. I'm like, there's an answer. Yeah. There's an answer. Yeah. And I want you to get it. I want you to grab it. I want you to apply it to your life, especially in the tough times. That's what this is for. Mm. In the times where you just can't see, you don't know where it's like, I don't know. I don't know. Great. Okay, there's, there's an answer for you. Mm -hmm. There's a manual for you to help you through the tough times. I'm not, th this is not to keep you from having tough times. This is to help you to bring value to your life so that you can get through the tough times. Facts. Trying to bring, if I bring like we're not praying away from, from trials and tribulation. They're going to come. God already told us they're coming. All right, God, give me the value. That's good. Bring value to me. That's good. Bring worth to me. Bring, bring the wisdom and the understanding. Bring it to me so that I can get past those times. Since they're coming anyway, prepare me for them. And so that's what we, so again, and they're like, yeah, you got to the part. We, we're building a foundation. We're trying to make sure that you guys understand mm -hmm. that the most important mm -hmm. part to marriage is not the marriage itself, per se. The most important part is the foundation in Christ Jesus. Listen, Pastor Pat, because so many of us are guilty of, if I just get married, right, then it's going to be solved. And that's not the case. I just want somebody to share life with. But then you hadn't, you know, mat matured through life to right. know that there is no, um, how can I say it? When it comes to developing and enjoy enjoying um, the, the gifts that God give us, and marriage is a gift and singleness is a gift, if you have not matured and grown in relationship with him, then you won't be able to steward it well. And it's a matter of time before it too is taken away. And single people, that is a that is a major key. My major key to finding somebody, possibly, is to build my relationship with the Lord. Because you're single, you have a lot more time to spend in ministry. You have a lot more time to spend in mission. Check this out. You have a lot more time to spend in your word. I know it gets hard. I know it gets tough. I know you're trying to figure it out, but, but, but understand you, you, this time that you have, take advantage of it. Mm -hmm. Take advantage of just spending that one-on-one -on -one time with God. Because Paul tells us when you get married, now you gotta figure out how to divide your time between God and how to please your spouse, that's the word. How do I, basically, how do I please God and please my spouse at the same time? Simultaneous. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so you got that. <laughs> you answer wisely to wisdom. That means you can answer foolish to wisdom as well. Mm -hmm. Verse 3, Proverbs 5, verse 3. For the lips of an immoral woman are as sweet as honey, and her mouth is smoother than oil. But in the end, she is as bitter as poison, as dangerous as a double-edged 
sword. Would you read five and six? Five and six. Her feet go down to death. Her steps lead straight to the grave, for she cares nothing about the path to life. She staggers down a crooked trail and doesn't even realize it. So what I, 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 annotate, I annotate, I write in my Bible, and I wrote, and you should too. I wrote warning. Mm -hmm. After he grabbed his son's attention, he realized that his attention span may be a little short. <laughs> because now he wasn't talking to an old man. He was mm -hmm. talking to, like, I don't, I, I'm thinking that this is David talking to Solomon, and mm -hmm. Solomon is recounting mm -hmm. uh, what his dad told him. Mm -hmm. However, Solomon was a father as well. Mm -hmm. So he could have been passing down some rich wisdom to his very own son. Either way it go. It was some words that was going forth, and he knew that based on the family line, maybe his attention was a little short. Let me mm -hmm. go on and put him on right now. Mm -hmm. Son, listen, warning, warning, warning. Yeah. She coming, and she's smooth. She's slicker than a can of oil. <laughs> so be careful, because she coming for you, and she coming. Why? You got a lot of stuff that then drew her attention to you. Right. You got honor. I know I'm kind of going ahead of myself. You yeah, got honor. You got wealth. You, you work hard. You looking good. Are you kidding me? She coming and gunning for it. And yeah. she know exactly what to say. Yeah. There, there, there are, I know, maybe men too, but I know for sure out of the testimonies people mouth that there are women that their purpose is to take down. I heard one testimony for sure that there was this woman, she was after this pastor. And she said her, like her fun thing to do is to go after pastors just to bring them down. Listen, most of the time these, uh, let me see, let me stay focused. <laughs> these uh, immoral people, uh, uh, women, they looking for anybody in a suit. It could be a UPS suit. <laughs> it could be a church suit. It could, a FedEx suit. They don't care. As long as they see a suit, they attribute that to hard work. And then guess what? He he good. He this. He that. Whatever the case may be. And I want that. And here's the thing, though. So we so barbershop talk. Mercy. So barbershop talk is at the end of the day, like it was a bunch of married men. We were just talking about, you know, uh, some of the trappings and temptations of being married. And at the truth be told, we all came to the conclusion that at the end of the day, it's up to us. Yeah. Like, it's up to us. Now, yeah. we all said, I'm saying now, wives, help us out. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you don't have to be, you know what I'm saying, whoever, Lena Horn, but like, like, yeah, yeah, no, I threw it out there. Good. Old oh, people look up. Who's Lena? But you don't have to be Lena Horn, but like, help us out. You know what I'm saying? That's like, good. like we're, we're visual, we're visual creatures. Mm -hmm. Now, at the end of the day, we all discover or all confess. At the end of the day, man, I got to keep me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I got to make sure I'm I'm straight. Yeah. Uh, but but like I was saying earlier, I I believe when we when we fall out of the flow of God, mm. you become pray for the wolf. Yeah. Don't it? Yeah. 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 That's good. Now you said you said something that was very important too, Pastor Pat, and that is you have to have a heart that wants to be kept. Mm. Have a keepable heart. And then by the same token, as a, as a, now I'm jumping the gun again, and as a loving wife, keep your husband. Yeah. Keep him. Yeah. Don't just assume that he's going to remain. He's a man. But at the end at of the, the day. At the, that's what I'm saying. At the so end, this is, yeah, this yeah, is yeah. where it becomes this, like, I'm going to do me. I'm, but, yeah, but, but at the remember, end of the day. Bruh, you got to, you, you the, you the man. Yeah, but remember, it's a relationship. I, I get it. I get it. And I do know the main responsibility is on the you. Each individual yeah. person. Mm -hmm. Even for the wife. She's like, mm -hmm. baby, I know, but he coming home and he still got his, his, his mechanic clothes on, his hands there, he's sitting on. Like, I get it. So vice versa, men just don't think that, that our wives don't want to see, you know, good lookingness. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what they like mean. But, but good looking. Good looking is you gotta play. So, so, but at the end of the day, we everybody, every individual has to do their part. I have to do my part at no matter what she says or what she does, man, I'm faithful to her. 
you have to do your part, no matter what, you, you know, it's, it is what it is. Anyway. Oh, man. You, you, That's the, I thought you was going to keep going. Wait, wait, no. wait, because it was something that, uh, uh, okay, I can't do it. All right, so, 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 so our time is running out. But remind us, remind us that we are at verse 7 next week when we get ready to do in-person service. It's going to be good. It's Let the church say good. amen. Amen. Let the church say amen again. Amen. And amen again. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus for this time that you have given unto us, oh, Father. We are grateful yes. uh, for uh, your word. We're grateful for uh, time. Uh, we're grateful for the instructions and the wisdom and, and the understanding and, and your patience. You've been patient with us, dear God. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your mercy toward us. Thank you for being long suffering with us, O oh Heavenly Father, as we figure this out. Mm -hmm. We ask you, O oh Heavenly Father, to, 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 not, um, to not leave us, mm -hmm. to not forsake us. Don't take your, Don't take your spirit away from us, O oh Heavenly mm -hmm. Father. Continue to lean in on us with your word and with your love. Rest. And I pray that we will, that we will, uh, um, we will give back to you Respond. as you have shown to us. You, you, you loved us first. Yes. Lord. And so by loving us first, you've given us every reason to love you back. Yes. And so I pray, oh, Heavenly Father, I pray for, the, for all of our hearts yes. that there is good and understanding ground. I pray to God that we have a heart that wants to uh, chase after you that we're always men and women after your very own heart, yes. O oh Heavenly Father, so that we can bring you glory and that your son shall be glorified. We thank you and love you in Christ Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. There is a way.